presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate you growling and prowling with us. We have the Dow Industrials down 48. Get the NASDAQ off 12, S&P's off 9, gold contract down $13.60, trading at $12.95 an ounce. You got silver down 29 cents, $15.16 an ounce. They both gave it up uh, overnight, uh, no doubt. Uh, bottom line is that you're, you're pulling back into the strength, but uh, this is all about the uh, pound and the euro, which are going to keep uh, rocking uh, this uh, market and rocking this dollar, folks. Light sweet crude up 35 uh, cents, uh, $58.62. Now, that broke topside yesterday. Yeah, yeah, and definitely. We got those numbers out this morning, right? 10.30? Uh, uh, natural gas, right? Natural gas. Yeah, that's right. Dude. We got the numbers yesterday. yesterday. Which was, yeah. That's what broke them. Yeah. Yes. Notes and bonds, you get the 10-year note down two ticks, 122.25. 30-year off eight at 145.29. Now, that, both notes and bonds, folks, they just are rejecting lower price. Uh, it's pretty amazing. We are almost at a full last 12 months low in the yield, high in the price. King dollar, king dollar up 228 ticks, trading 96,740. Euro is at 113 to one US dollar. The yen is at 111 and a half, and the pound is out here at 132.34. And uh, over in Europe, man, they still don't know what's going on. That's, that's the, well, in the UK. Sorry, cool. In the uh, UK. Oh, for Brexit, okay. Yeah, yeah. Brexit, no doubt. Yeah. Let's go over to someone that does know what's going okay. on in this marketplace. Okay. Our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks of TD Ameritrade Think or Swim. And don't forget, folks, every trading day right here, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time, if you want to understand option strategies, futures, great program, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time, defined risk. If you haven't test-driven yet the Think or Swim platform, folks, real easy to do. At our website at TFNN, just hit the banner, bring it up to a lot of trade with paper money each and every day, and you can follow Kevin and his team. Kevin Hanks, what's going on? Good morning, guys. Good to be on with you. You know, I heard you guys talking, Tom, and, you know, we don't know if Brexit's going to be good or Brexit's going to be bad, but one thing we do know, Brexit is going to be volatile. Yes. That move... <laughs> in the British pound, in the euro, and the corresponding move in the U.S. dollar about, oh, probably 3.30 uh, Florida time, that was vicious. That was, man. And then it came snapping right back because people realized that this isn't over yet. This isn't anywhere close to over. Yeah. So I think, you know, we don't know much, but it's going to be volatile. And yesterday's move on, on you know, a, a relatively benign announcement really showed you how volatile it can be. And, you know, when Kevin's talking, folks, it's really unusual that you have the European currencies move at our 3.30 in the afternoon. Right. Yeah. And that's because they're sitting there meeting. Do you know what I right. mean? It's, that's, that's, and that's a differential, and it's, it's a big differential because it moves our dollar. Uh, right, it's, it's, and, and I've been saying all along, uh, you know, talking to you guys and on our shows here, that there's a lot of premium built up in the U.S. dollar from Brexit. Yes. That could come flushing out if and when they get that 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 settled or resolved. I don't know when that's going to be, and frankly, <laughs> it looks like they're pushing it out even further. But when it does, I think you saw a little precursor of what can happen to those currencies. No, I you know, I don't seem to remember, and I'm sure this, it, it's been out here that the dollar has been consolidating for such a long period of time. Yeah, you know, we're, we're really at the same place, folks, almost going back to October. October 24th was one of the numbers, but it's just hanging there, man. And, right. And, and the danger, you know, well, it's not a danger, but when you're hanging at, at a place like this, it's like, okay, are you going to break topside in a huge way or are you just going to break down? You know, because all these currencies are kind of at the same place, meaning the euro, the pound is close to, well, the, the euro is closer to as lows. The pound seemed to uh, really catch a bit out here. So it's... You know, and and it seems like one day it is not going to be such a thing as a hard Brexit, and then the next day it's like, well, 
you know, what they had done yesterday, folks, is that all they voted on is what they don't want to do, not what they want right. to do. Sure. Exactly. And eventually, the Eurozone is going to come to these people and tell us, stop telling us what you don't want. Right. Right? And tell yeah. us what you need to get it done. Stop telling us what you don't agree with. Right. And stop coming up with some ideas of, of what you do agree with. And so... You know, eventually, you guys know that politicians love deadlines and love dates. So eventually, they'll come to some. But I mean, this deal, Brexit, and, and everything that they're talking about that has some fundamental flaws. Like, for instance, Ireland is a fundamental flaw in this whole process. Right. Right. How, what do you do with Ireland? So. You know, th this is going to get bumpy. Uh, that I, I guarantee nothing in terms of direction, but I guarantee it's going to get volatile. Yeah, and then you know, when we start talking option, option strategies, defined risk. I mean, that's that's where you you want to basically uh, limit your right. risk, folks, because probability-wise. Um, this is a toss-up, man. Yeah, you dealing know. with a lot right. of uncertainty, right? Yeah, totally. there's no and, and that's And that's the only strategies that we teach, Tom, is risk-defined. Because why? You can be right, you can be wrong, but your real number one goal is to be able to trade the next day. Yes. Right? And, and, and keep your losses controlled and keep your winning controlled, too. The, both of those work. So that, that'll control your risk and that'll control your overall exposure. That's what we teach every day. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. So, you know, it, what, what's interesting, it, it seems like we're in a, in a large consolidation. I mean, the, the market's still having a hard time with this October 10th level. Uh, that was quite a downdraft. It seems like we get up to it, we pull back a bit. So if we are in a consolidation, Kevin, what type of strategies do you like inside a consolidation? Well, a well, by definition, here's what you have, Tom. If you're coming into a range-bound scenario yes. with, remember, you've got the VIX trading about 1370. That's historically low. Yeah. Now, it can go a little bit lower into the spring and summer, but you know, 13, if you get into 13 and a half, you're maybe a point or two points away from the lows yeah. on VIX. So this is when your strategies have to start gearing towards owning volatility, not selling it, right? Because if you buy some volatility and if it goes down another point and a half, it's not going to hurt you. If you sell volatility and it goes up 15 points, that could hurt you. That's and that's where we're at kind of right now. So right. we err on the side of, you know, play the, the ebb and flow, play the mean reverting aspect to implied volatility. That's what professional traders really do, and that's what we teach. I mean, remember, VIX is 13 and change. The historical level, the average for VIX, about 15, 40 is where it trades. So you're a couple points below that. Err on the side of being long implied volatility, calendar spreads, diagonal spreads, things like that. You're going to love it, right? Yeah, right. right. I mean, you know, it's amazing. Uh, that we, we, What happens, folks, is that when you do get these rallies, the VIX gets crushed immediately. Um, and in this particular case, it's not that we're even at highs and the VIX is really low, which is pretty right. cool. I mean, that's and a grinding up market is going to take some more out of the VIX, but that's what you're really betting, right? If you're betting that maybe we're in a range bound here where it could go lower and VIX could jump. Now, VIX is up 30 cents today. Remember, a long, a long implied volatility trade is what will give you that X, not only direction, but you'll get a little benefit of implied volatility as well. Right here, folks, 11 o'clock. You want to understand that upside down. Great program. If you happen to be on the West Coast, just go to TFNN.com. Folks, Kevin, you have a, a great day, a safe day. We look forward to showing 45 minutes. Happy St. Patrick's Day, O'Brien. Happy, Happy St. Patrick's, Patrick's Day, day man. That's right. Enjoy. Top, pot of gold. Let's Top get of the that morning. gold going up. <laughs> Stay right there, folks. Uh, Tommy and I are coming right back. Have a great one, Kevin. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
the TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's down 47, Nasdaq's up 8, S&Ps are off 7.5, and, a half. and uh, we get GE all over the news today. Yeah. You got GE uh, right now up 36 cents. You're trading at uh, 10.38, and uh, bottom line is you're going right into this monster downdraft, $178 million. High of that is 10.57, so we'll see uh, if, in fact... Uh, it has the juice to uh, basically take that out. So let's see what they have any say out here. So, yeah, I think this year they're going to burn through about two billion dollars. But then they talk about in 2020 that they may be cash flow positive. Um, so GE will burn as much as two billion in cash this year as they try to repair its balance sheet and put its reeling power business back on stable ground. Uh, let's see, free cash flow. The company's industrial business and profit will decline this year. I'm trying to get down to where that 2020 though. Let's see. But we expect 2020 and 2021 performance to be significantly better. Let's see. Yeah. Let's just see if we go back. Uh, what else they have up here? Yeah, there's quite a story today, folks, in the Wall Street Journal that, that gives you an idea of how GE does its books. And the, the gist of the story is that they bought, bought Alstrom at $10 billion. They end up putting on, a, on their books... Uh, at 14 billion, okay, so more than they actually bought it for, and then they accelerated the goodwill up to 17.2 billion a few years later. Now, what happens with that is this: is that when you have assets, bottom line is that you, you take the asset, and over the, the course of time, just like your house, you, you get depreciation on it, yes. right? Well, you, legally, what happens if it's in goodwill? There's no depreciation. Yeah. And because so, theoretically, goodwill, if it's legitimate goodwill, it's not depreciating like an asset. Right. 
really right. does depreciate. Right. Yeah. So, you know, GE is a master at, uh, and all these, you know, you, you can go back, I forget what this, this uh, I think it was about 15 years ago, they did a, an article on, on GE about how many actually accountants that they had working for them in-house, not okay. outside the house. So sure. It's always been a financial engineered uh, firm. So Yeah. So the, the, the bottom line is that you still have no transparency. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I was trying to find it. You show me. It's in the journal. Yeah, the Wall yeah. Street Journal right. today. Yeah. Right. Pretty cool article for those who want to check it out. Just talking about the Goodwill, that purchase of Alstrom. What did they purchase them for? Ten billion. Ten billion, and then they added thirteen billion of Goodwill to their books immediately. Uh, they made 13.9. Yes, yeah. Right. Um, then they brought it up to 17.2. But the, the whole point being that they added more goodwill than the entire purchase right. of the thing. That's really what the, right. the, the, the point is. Right. Um, because what that means is that the value of the assets was actually negative besides the goodwill. Which is um, unbelievable. And it's very rare, almost unheard of, that a company purchases a company and then, let's say for $10 billion, right. and you add goodwill greater than that number, because right. you're basically purchasing negative assets. Um, exactly. You know, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, and inside that article, it has that right before Alstrom got bought, that on their balance sheet, they had that their assets only worth $600 million. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, $600 billion. No. No, no $600 million. I think you're right. Yeah, $600 yeah. Million. Yeah. Unreal. Okay, natural gas, right? You got it. So it's Thursday. We're going to get those EIA natural gas numbers. I just pulled up kind of the whisper number here. So we're looking at a decline of about 200, I think that's going to be 200,000 uh, barrels in there. Um, we'll pull it up in a moment, but... Nonetheless, jumping back to the natural gas chart, looking at the April contract, trading just under 285. We were up there briefly on a couple occasions just after 9 o'clock and just after 8 o'clock this morning. So I jumped in here. We're going to look at maybe we get those numbers at 1030. Uh, I jumped to, so 285 is a nice price point if you want exposure to the yeah. upside and the downside. You're right next to that level. Uh, the noons and the 11s both line up with 285 being a price point, which is nice. All right, so I started off with the noons, which we usually prefer. Give us a little time, an hour and a half to, after we get those inventory numbers. I pulled up, here is your 12 o'clock expirations, right? Your bullish spread on the right. This one's going to be a little bit out of the money, because you can see you start gaining value when it gets a top, above 285 on the bullish side. A little bit out of the money. It's going to be our cheaper spread, costing us $10, because we're getting in at 286, one penny above the floor, 285. Okay. And I can already tell the bearish side, it's going to be about a $4 difference, right? This one's going to be $14, difference being we're about $4 in the money on the bearish side. So you're looking at 24 bucks, 2.4 pennies that you need away from 285. Um, not bad for natural gas no, lately with, with inventory numbers about to drop. Just backing things up for a little perspective. This is just yesterday. We were down there at almost 276, right? I mean, nine, eight, nine pennies in the span. And just to get a feel, so those are our noons. If you wanted just to maybe have that trade right for the number, not paying for that extra hour. We'll just pull these up. This is going to be, I'm going to close this for a moment. So this is going to be, and this is great when you can put them side by side. Same prices, just paying for the hour. Here's your 11 a.m. Here's your noon. Yeah. You were paying $10, right? 286. Yes. In this one, you're going to be paying $7. Whoop, let me just tick in. You're going to be paying $7 because you're getting a 285.7. So do you want to pay that extra $3 or three-tenths of a penny per side uh, for that extra hour, and we'll just square it up. So there's your bullish side, looking at about seven. Same thing, pull it up the bearish side. You're selling it, looking about 10. So you're looking at $17 versus 24, 1.7 pennies versus 2.4 pennies for that hour. Um, and again, just pushing things. You know, we always pull up both sides because that way it's nice not having to pick. We were just talking to Kevin Hanks, right, about trading the VIX. You know, you're right. buying volatility when slow, you're selling it when it's high. You're not even worried sometimes about what side you need to be on if no. you're doing, you know, he was saying double-sided, you know, whether it's yes. diagonal spread, That's whatever right. it is. Uh, same thing here. Do you want to pay that type of premium? But you can always go bullish or bearish because, man, if you're directional, I mean, not a bad trade, man, to get in at $7 at 285.7, right? Your, your losses are capped at 7 bucks. Now, your risk is it expires where it is yep. and you lose everything. Yeah. Right, you're That's slightly out of the money. Pretty cool. Now, vice versa, you can get in the bearish side, yeah. and your your risk is it stays where it is. Right, you get in at ten, and you get back though 
because uh, it's at 284.6, three and a half pennies if it stays where it is. So you're yeah. really only paying the same amount of premium in the market on both sides. This one just has some value where you're sitting. Not a bad trade, man. If you really are directionally biased with the numbers coming and you're looking for some movement in one way or the other, and not a bad trade for 17 bucks to totally. go on both sides. Yeah. So let's go take a look at it. So when we're doing that, the first trades that we lined up, that's a volatility. It doesn't matter which way it goes. And the second one, of course, has to do with, uh, you know, if you think it's going to go one way or the other. Yeah. If you're just taking one side of that trade, right, you're right. going to be directionally biased for sure. And if we take a look at this now, this is going to be slightly, well, actually, it's, it's right kind of, no, it's, just, it's still, this is a delayed quote uh, right, anyway, folks, so you can just see it. But I'm just curious as to what we did. Do you mind if I did. just check back? Yeah. We may be on a different contract. Uh, no? Nope. We're good. Okay. Some so, of them have already rolled yeah. to June. So if we take a look at this, oh, okay. So bottom line is that you come down kind of hot on Monday. That's a 28841. <coughs> yep. Yeah, so. Which we're just over, right? Yeah. yeah. My, my take would be that, yeah, you're going to back down a little. We'll see, we'll see how that shakes out. Yeah. Um, and then the, it, what was interesting is that the, the numbers still have a drawdown versus a build. And we must be getting close to a, a build, right? Well, actually, the, the, you know, there's, there's articles in the paper today that we're so busy in Florida right now, folks, because what has happened, this is going to be the first month in Pinellas County that they're going to take in $10 million in bed tax. That's in one month. Okay. Um, and it's a 6% deal. That's what it comes down to. Sorry, in bed tax, we're talking about natural gas, tie that all together for... That it's been so cold across the country that there's so many people there. Okay. But, you know, the, cold, okay. the colder it is across the country, the more people come in these six weeks to Florida. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, 877-927-6648. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software 
software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's down 45, NASDAQ up 5, S&P's down 7, and look at that number. There's your number. Stockpiles declined 204 billion cubic feet. Median estimate was 210, so yeah. slightly off that number. We'll jump back to the charts, see how we're doing. Pull up that chart. A little bit of a drop I saw. Yeah. yeah. So we had the contract. We were just under 285, right? We just dropped about a penny. Nothing too dramatic. Yeah. Um, nothing too dramatic, so we'll see. But... It should be as in, didn't decline as much as they thought. We have a little bit more supply than they might have thought. When you have more supply, it's going to be cheaper prices for the same product, right? So we have more supply. Now, it's only talking about 6 billion cubic feet. The estimate is like 210. Pretty close, but nonetheless, we're... Uh, and you're coming into the, you know, I, I don't know when they start the build again. Um, it, I'm sure it has to do with the cold weather across the country but yes we're pretty close i mean yeah what and is that's it, march 14th today excuse me uh yes it is yeah. i believe right yeah it right. is the 14th and this is what it was just kind of talking about so this is prior to the news that yeah. this story came out but it is talking about um widening supply shortfall to normal levels has buoyed prices amid late season cold blasts through much of the winter um it's muted, uh, the move's been muted as demand is poised to slacken with the approach of spring, which is kind of what you're talking about. And five-year average is usually only a decline of 99 oh, billion cubic okay. feet, right? Yep. Year earlier was only minus eight, uh, 88. Um, and so that's just kind of talking about what we're talking about in terms of they, this is ahead of the news again that futures were rising for a third straight day on speculation that the report will show a record seasonal drop in stockpiles after a frigid start to the month. So we're close to a record seasonal drop um, just like you're saying, that usually we're not plowing through this amount of natural gas anymore right. because maybe temperatures are softening, but that is not the case. And so we just dropped about a couple pennies, keeping in mind. Now, let's just jump back to maybe the noons. Uh, actually, before we do, so here's both sides of this trade. There's your bearish side right there. If you want to get out, you're getting out of 15, you're putting up 7 bucks, right? And just on the bearish side. Uh, bullish side, obviously, you're out of the money here. But if we had the volatility trade, let's just say we did the noon volatility, which we like doing sometimes. Yeah. Your bearish spread having all the value. And now there's a little bit, 282.9 to 2. So you're looking at a $5 bid offer spread. Um, which is something to consider when you're putting up 23. That's okay? why. Because yeah, that's yeah. why. You, that's right. where you know it's it's just uh, they're they're small numbers, but um, and let me just we'll uh, yeah, that's what I was just thank you. Um, so you obviously need a bigger move than this because you're only a penny and a half away from the price right. point. You were putting up about 2.4 pennies, so you realistically want at least three pennies where you start getting right. into the money there, and that would be about 282 to the downside. Um, so we'll see. I think that's a noon on that one. That's a noon. That's which, why. Yeah. Which makes the difference. Right. Let's go take a look at uh, so something just caught a bid here. What is that? Okay. Let's see what we have here. So uh, NASDAQ back to yeah. positive territory. Yeah. So let's go uh, into the NQs and see what we have happening inside these uh, NQs. So you're down as low as uh, 72.69. Right now, oh, yeah, it's not much movement, no. actually. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you, the, what you have here, folks, is that this... Um, I'll put it up on this one. The the October 10th downdraft is, you know, bottom line, given the market conniptions. That's that's how this thing is shaken out. And it doesn't matter what indice you bring up. You know, we had come down hard uh, the 10th and the 11th. Yeah. Made it through the 11th, okay, but bottom line, this 10th is still giving it a tough time. Uh, the SPY yesterday failed uh, on price and volume. You know, so what you had here is that the SPY got over the march, fourth high, 281.87. We hit 282, but then close underneath it. So today, the market's going to release that. Does it actually just want to go sideways and build more cars to try to get higher, or are you going to start seeing unloading of stocks once again? Sure. And, you know, so it's going to be subtle because we don't have much movement out here. The real question is going to be do you stay under this 281.87? 
and you get an expansion of volume. Sure, yeah. Um, the small caps are the weakest indices out here. Uh, this, uh, this had uh, basically, you know, the, the type of bounce. So picture the, the high is 159.50 in the IWM. We only got to 155. Okay. And you turned, you know, and, and you would... On the... F is that the... That's the 6th. So at the 6th of March, that's when the small caps basically did go downtown, had volume behind the move, we came up to that yesterday, and you can see you came up to that yesterday with 24 million versus 29, but yet you were still going into this number over here at 68. Okay, like, okay. that's the 11th versus yeah, the 10th. It is, but, yeah. and that, that's what, what Tommy just brought up. That shows that the small caps are weaker because the S&P made it through the 11th, the Dow made it through the 11th, and it took so much energy getting through there that it's the 10th now that's stopping them. Do you know what I mean? So it's kind of interesting, you know. So yeah. it just shows that the counter trend bounce, um, you know, just couldn't get up to those levels. So let's check back one, two. Oh, so look at that. Two, eight, There's going to be some action here. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Just checking it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, some of the higher volume equities out here. Let's go take a look at them. And yesterday you had anemic volume, by the way, folks. Uh, we get uh, GE up 42 cents. You got. Uh, oh, look at Snap. That's no joke, man. They're up to. That's a 10% that's a jump almost for Snapchat yeah, this so let's morning. Let's see what's going on with Snapchat. So. Oops. That was AMD. Okay. Hey, can I hold? Yeah. There you go. There you go. Go for it. So, yeah, it's quite a move, man. Oh, 10%. So, let's see what they're saying. Boy, that's, that's moved. Three months you moved from. Uh, 482. Yeah, let me even see what, because uh, this is, look at that run that started. So 563. Um, it's basically a double since January 16th. Right, and so it's going to be another ABC up. So I mean, 60 it's, days. It's, uh, it's blowing this B point away with volume. Let me do this on a weekly. Yeah, you can make the case it's an ABC up on a weekly too. Let's see. 136 million. We're at 80. No, it's not going to have the volume on a weekly. So let's see what they have to say out here. After winning over BTIG, what is, let's see, that's going to be an analyst. Uh, I believe so, yeah. Yeah, so he downgraded in September, and it uh, looks like that analyst Greenfield has changed that. That's, that guy's pretty powerful, huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes, you know, I'm not familiar with them, but, yeah. you know, these Rich analysts, they're, they're very segmented as in that's their job they 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 sit on every earnings call right you know what i mean yeah. i mean they really have an in-depth knowledge most of the time um as as in-depth as you can get let's put it that way yeah so uh tailored brands is getting smoked oh uh, boy yeah look at this thing I, I i pulled it up it looks like they just at first i thought this was the golf company but it, yeah, I think that's Taylor, right? Yeah, this is the, they make... Uh, okay, that's actually a tailor, like a uh, tailoring your suit. Yes, yeah. exactly. Holding company that uh, suits, sport coats, slacks, sportwear. Yeah. Basically for men. Yeah, bottom line is that uh, this is, this stock is a disaster. You know, um, so after the decline, you're only talking about a $440 million um, company. Say only, it's quite a number, but... Look at that, 35 bucks and... May. May of 2018. So 10 months. You go from, you know, a multi-billion dollar company. Oh, this is, I there see. There we go. Joseph this A. Is, Banks, this Men's This is Warehouse. Men's Warehouse and Joseph A. Banks. Oh, yeah, yeah man. These things have been, I, it blows my mind that that's Buy one, stock. two, get nine free. Totally, man, totally. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, it's just a different ball game. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Dow right now is down 25. Nasdaq's up 6. S&P's up 5. We'll come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's down 18. Nasdaq's off six. S&P's are off five and a half. And let's go over and take a look at that uh, pound. It, it, was, it's, it seems, I want to look at some of this news, too, because it, it seems that it may, oh, this is kind of interesting, man. Yeah, this, this pound is not backing down from its highs. Yeah, we don't have volume on it anyway, but that's, that's, that's quite a move. I mean, this, that was the day... Man, that is the 15th of January. That's that's when the first vote came in. I believe so. The that, one that she lost, like, 420 to 200 or yeah. something like that. And the thing that's wild... She lost this one pretty close to that, too. I know. And, and the thing that is blowing my mind on this, actually, is that... I think you had it in the last one. Now you yeah, just... Okay. Well, no, I just, okay. You know, Theresa May is um, <laughs> telling the uh, MPs that... Uh, She's still fighting to get her twice rejected deal through Parliament. It's like she's got beaten so bad. I'm trying to figure out like how does this work? You know what I mean? Is she going to keep bringing this thing up until it's over? You know? Yeah. It's because it was quite a, you know, back to the agreement of on risk is long delay and burp. okay. So now what is what it looks like, like here? Back, can I just go slower? Yeah. And slower. Back the agreement or risk a longer delay. I'm right. saying you know you don't love it, but guess what? You want a Brexit. Speaking to the people that want a Brexit, you want right. a Brexit. This your option because it's not happening unless this happens. I mean, they have right. to pass something that their house is going to vote on and pass. Right. So yeah, you know, just like we deal with in politics, um, there should be concessions made. That's what that that's the only way that things get passed usually, um, and that's what she's arguing for. We'll see if she can sway some of those people. Not so much so far, right? Look at this. So. We're going to get action again this afternoon, folks, because this is saying that Parliament to debate delaying Brexit votes expected after 5 p.m. What do we say, six hours uh, or four hours? We have to check this yeah, out. Yeah, so that's 5 p.m. their time, right? Right. Yeah. They have it right here, 12, 15 p.m. Um, okay. Caused, uh, yeah. 
And that's probably, it's, yeah. She says, if there's no deal by March 20th, then Britain will have to take part in the EU, EU elections. EU elections in May, and the country will be stuck in a long extension. May called the meeting of a cabinet uh, at 1.30 p.m. So, well, we'll see uh, this afternoon how this thing is going to uh, get rocking. So let's see. The vote tonight is not a simple question of whether to extend Brexit Day or not. Uh, instead, the government has worded its amendment in a way that basically tells Parliament that it faces the choice between approve this deal um, and taking a short extension to exit to, to exit, exit day, or failing to approve the deal and being stuck in the EU for much longer. So it's like this, or we're 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 pushing things back for a while. Right. Yeah. So it can be amended. As we see, they usually vote on those amendments first, right? So things will be pushed back as we uh, await those. Um, a simple motion today seeking a mandate from the House to ask for an extension of Article 50 for a length and propose. Yeah, so Labor's Brexit spokesman, Starmer, said the Prime Minister risks a repeat of the chaos in Parliament on Wednesday because of the wording. Yeah, I don't, I don't see much change in... Uh, but, like Kevin Hinks says, they love a deadline, man. We'll see if things change when you get to a deadline, right? I'll tell you. Because everybody can be idealistic when you have time. But when push comes to shove and things need to get done, sometimes sacrifices need to be made in a lot of things. I'm telling you. It's yeah. probably going to be wild, man. Let's go take a look at the euro. Because what had happened the last couple of days is that the euro finally got a little juice behind it. That's not you're, the euro. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so it's... Yeah. Just kind of sideways out sure. here. It's it's definitely inside the range, you know. Yeah, I see lower lows and lower highs as as that's for since almost the entire year. Oh yeah. To be fair. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the year. Watch this. Right. <laughs> You're going all the way back to 2018. Yeah. February of 2018. Yeah. You know when this thing got hurt, it it came down just right. as. Uh, our dollar index is at those, at those uh, highs. Yeah. You know, so. Let's check back in on natural gas real quick, see where we're trading at as we're about 15 minutes after that number. And uh, so we saw the initial spike down to a low of 282.68, but pretty, pretty muted response so far right. on that natural gas number sitting just under that level. We're within about a penny of where that news was uh, before you we up. If you had a volatility trade, you don't want this at 285, folks. Correct. That's, That's your max line. loss right, right there, 285. Right. Anywhere away from that point, you gain value. 877-9276. Oh, let's go to Boeing. Okay, so um, this is pretty intense. You Good know, old USA leading from ahead, catching up with the rest of the world. Yeah, totally, yeah. totally. Now, the amount of money, folks, that is going to be going south in this is uh, pretty intense because what you have, let's see if they get a... Right there, what, 600 billion max orders at risk. That... Yeah, and what they're looking for, this is what the, um, I was listening to this this morning, like if you had already bought these planes, right, you're looking for a refund Yes. by the month right now, okay, um, for not only not being able to use the plane, but then for turning around and having to lease other planes. Yep. You know, so sure. you're talking some... Uh, so let alone if you, if you have future orders, if you're already an owner, right. they might try and come back at them. Right. For, for costs incurred or what yeah. it is, yeah. And, okay. So there you go. That's, that's a great chart. Just in terms of orders for the MAX and the Airbus Neo 3. So uh, I wanted to see what, which one's the, okay, here's the, the MAX and the Neo. Yeah. So this is what really, though, this is the portion that's delivered. Right. This is orders that they haven't even dropped yet. And this is where you're talking about. What do they have? Uh, 350. Yeah, yeah, and you, we have the number at 5,000, right? right? Well, there's, there's the 5,000 mark, okay? So that's a lot of potential loss that they haven't even gotten the planes yet. Right. And uh, nobody's going to be taking delivery today of that plane. Nope. You know, right? Nope. I mean, that's where, and I, I guarantee, uh, guarantees don't come often, but th they have probably every right within a contract if the, oh, planes, yeah. the planes are falling out of the sky, not to laugh. You know, they're saying, you're not dropping that off and taking payment. You know, you, right. your planes are falling out of the sky. There's no way. And then let's, that's... that's can I just jump Because they go through one by one. That's what. So they started with, you know, they have the 600 billion. So they talk via jet. They just doubled their order to 25 billion only last month. Now they're talking about they're they're gonna, you know, decide future plans, sure. right? And they go one by one. I think. And they're start. deciding whether they go with Airbus. That's that's the. Well, that's know. the only other choice, really, right? right? No, I mean, that's totally. it. if you're not gonna buy planes right. off Boeing, yeah. um, you know, 
I'm sure and Boeing he, has you other. Can see, you can see they've delivered a lot of those Neos. You know, that's like yeah, well, it almost looks like 900. Yeah, they yeah. plan on doing uh, yeah. like six, seven hundred. Yeah. In fairness, yeah. though, percentage-wise of the amount they plan, probably pretty close. Yeah. You know, in terms of like marginal, almost right. In terms of how many they've delivered versus how many they plan to deliver in terms of orders. So you get Lion Air, Indonesia's Lion Air. Uh, Firms up moves to drop, 20, drop a $22 billion order from the 737 in favor of the Airbus. Airbus. Separately, Garuda Indonesian plans to cut orders for Boeing plane at a, a $5 billion order from the Saudis. Hangs in the balance. Um, I bet there's a lot more, you know, Oof. so yeah. 737 first entered service in the 1960s, best-selling model of Boeing's top earner. The re-engineered MAX version has racked up more than 5,000 orders worth in excess of $600 billion, including planes that have already been delivered. Pretty remarkable. Yeah. And, you know, well, it's really going to be a matter of, like, how long um, are they going to be grounded? How, how quick? Can yeah. get this thing done? And you know what I, I said to you in the office, I think, yesterday? Um, I'd be hard-pressed that it's going to take a lot to restore confidence. Oh, big time. You know, what if they come out and say, we solved the problem, everything's good. You jumping on that plane next week? I don't know. And that's going to linger a little bit. Yeah, it is. 877-927-6648. We have the Dow down 28. NASDAQ off 9. S&P's off 6. Come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. And yeah, we had uh, Facebook took a little uh, bump yesterday, right? Well, it's down three bucks today. Not that's not the end of the world. Is that what it is? Let's take a quick peek, guys, because I'm curious myself. I hadn't even looked at it. Yeah, so 2.3 percent. That's a little bit of a haircut. It's down four bucks now, is it? Uh, but yeah, so quite a little story. Uh, which one we're going to be on? Not two. There we go. Um, so, undergoing one of its most widespread and persistent system outages, started yesterday at about noon. Um, I'm not really sure if it's cleaned up yet completely. I thought it was, but it doesn't say that everything's remedied in, in this article yet. Um, so, they take in $189 million in Day. daily revenue. Um, so, this is just talking about really nice idea to break the hardcore factual impact on a daily basis when you just lose one day of revenue, right. let alone, oh, this is worrisome, there's an impact, it's down. Right away, $200 million in revenue off the balance sheet immediately. Um, pretty remarkable that they're <laughs> that, at that size. Isn't it? It is. Um, yeah, so uh, problems. To, and this also translated to Instagram was having problems, I guess. Uh, WhatsApp, WhatsApp, which Oculus, is their, their family that. of apps, basically. Um, so they had some serious problems. Uh, I think they had a few fire, fire alarms going off in their headquarters, I'm sure. So after midnight, Instagram got up. That's what that's is saying. That, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I saw a tweet. That was, that's the actual Instagram account. So they must have been pretty confident to tweet out, we're back. Um, but nonetheless, $200 million uh, and... and you know, that's just the effect, let alone you always have the effect. You go on yesterday, it's broke. Maybe you don't go on today. Yeah, but right. But that's the real worrisome, right. I bet, um, let alone just the right. literal value of lost revenue. We should go back to natural gas. Let's see where Let's we see at. Let's see where we're at. Meh. 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 Pretty Meh. muted response. Meh. 283. We'll see. Stay right there, folks. We got a fast market coming up next. I'm man, Mr. Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. Be back this afternoon. Thanks, pal. Thanks, man. Wham! Go get him, folks.